Hey guys, welcome to a brand new video. Something I get asked quite a lot is how does the end of the season work? So today we're going to go over everything you need to know about the end of the season, hopefully. And if there's anything I miss, any other questions you have, leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. But I'm sure other people who have been through this before might have some answers for you as well. So end of season seven is the November the 7th. That is according to my calendar less than a month away now so according to my calendar everyone's calendar is the same less than a month away and then after that we're going to go into season eight pre-season for two months just over two months and then we actually start season eight on january the 16th with all of the new changes and everything like that and ranked is going to properly reset something a lot of people get wrong every time is when they get into the pre-season uh, so in a month's time their rank is going to be the same they're like why haven't i reset what's going on you don't actually reset in the preseason, you stay exactly as you are. Ranked is the same game mode, pretty much. The preseason is all about testing changes. You'll stay at your MMR, you'll stay at your ranking. You can even climb, you can go down as well, I guess, if you end up losing a lot of games. But it's quite a good chance for you actually, if you want to climb, even though it doesn't mean anything necessarily because you're, it doesn't like give you any extra rewards, it's a good chance to actually climb up to the next tier above. So if you're silver, you actually stand a pretty good chance to get to gold. Games tend to be a bit easier, but they also tend to be a lot more toxic because people don't mind losing. Uh, there's no ranked rewards at stake, I guess. But anyway, getting into season seven rewards then, we actually have some stuff for the bronze players, obviously a profile insignia, which is an icon. Uh, oh, sorry, you have the, the thing under, which we'll get into in a second, and then you have the icon. For silver, we're actually getting a victorious reward skin, which is cool if you are ranked in two plus Q. So that would be either 3v3, flex 5v5 or ranked solo queue 5v5 so you only need silver and both to get a ward screen which is pretty good and you get a loading screen border as well for gold we get to the normal stuff which is the victorious grave skin that they've announced but the different thing here is actually you get chromas per queue so i believe it is for 3v3 as well it seems like so if you get gold in 3v3 5v5 flex queue and 5v5 solo queue you're actually going to get three different chromas for your victorious grave skin which is pretty cool but that is one of the uh, main benefits i guess of getting to gold is you get this skin that a lot of other people won't have you have to remember that actually i think it's like top 15 20 percent right get to uh, gold i believe maybe top 30 percent so it's actually a lot of players that don't have this skin even though obviously a lot of other players do so we're going to have this now under our uh, name we have this border which is going to be different for every single uh league like if you're gold silver bronze plat or diamond it's going to be a little bit different so you have this on the profile that be visible for everybody else and then obviously we have our icon and borders and stuff the borders seem to be saying the same as you are already the icons are very slightly different but if i show you very quickly i believe it's this one here please work thank you uh this is what this season looked like uh, right now for silver solo 3v3 and 5v5 you can see the icon at the very top of these things is what actually changes we also have to remember that I believe there's not nothing been said about uh, differences, but or it's not changed from last season. You actually get a different one whether you're in the fifth, fourth, third, second, or first division of your league. So if you're gold one, gold two, gold three, gold four, gold five, you should get a slightly different icon um, and slightly different border depending on, on what it is. I believe that is that was how it worked in season seven. They haven't said anything different about that this time around. Maybe I made it up. They haven't said it's going to be different, so I'd assume it's going to be like that. Obviously, you can see there actually are, is a little bit different, the design, but that is the kind of color scheme that you're going to have for the icons as well for every different league. And then finally, we have the victorious ward skin, which is when if you get to uh, silver in more than one ranked queue, you're going to be getting this as well. And finally, for honor, if you are on a level three, four or five, you're going to be getting a ward skin. Don't be toxic for the last couple of weeks if you are. Like, I'm not going to judge, but just don't do it for the last couple of weeks because if you get chat restriction or anything like that, you're going to miss out on uh, your rewards. So there is actually one thing with Season 8, uh, with the reset and stuff that some people get confused all the time, is when the actual reset happens. So obviously in pre-season, we're not going to be resetting. We're going to be staying at our same ELO and everything like that. Season 8, we do reset. We go back to unranked. We have to play 10 placement games, and those have a really heavy MMR weighting per game, which will depend where we're going to end up. So really, you should, in theory... It should be if you finish gold five, you will finish anywhere between gold five to silver five. Now, obviously, all the time there are like mishaps, mishaps, I guess if that's the word. Uh, with this, like people who were diamond last season get placed in bronze and stuff like that. Hopefully, it doesn't happen this season, but it probably will. In general, it's one league below is what most people get. So if you, the only exception would be for diamond and master tier and challenger and stuff. The maximum you can get is a uh, plat one. So if you are diamond one, for example. Or diamond five the maximum you get is plat one and most diamond players will be placed between plat three and plat one depending on their placement games 
The only other thing I guess is some people try to choose this by duoing with people leagues below. So for example, a gold player might duo with a silver player because they think they're going to get easier games and that will be uh, a lot easier to climb and win. And they're obviously going to get 10 placement wins and they'll get really high up and stuff. Doesn't really work like that. Most people, and right, I've never come out and said it deliberately, but the way it should work is your MMR depends on the people in the game. So for example, you will likely play, if you're gold, you will likely play with silver, gold, and platinum players during your placements just because of how, like, if a plat player is on a losing streak, they'll come down to you. Silver, win streak, they'll come up to you as well, and you'll obviously have the gold players. So you're normally going to have a league below and a league above in your games. You could even have bronze and diamond, maybe. But the thing is, like, if you get placed in the one above, so if you're a gold player, for example, and you're playing with plat players, your MMR gain for that win would be a lot higher than if you're playing with silver players. So actually, like, your placement games can depend on the opponents and the teams you get, which seems kind of unfair, but it's just the way it is. If you get placed with loads of silver players as a gold one, you're probably going to have a lower placement than normal. If you get placed into higher ranked games, like with the platinum players and stuff, and you end up winning those games, you'll get more MMR and you'll have a higher chance of actually, like, placing a little bit higher uh, after your placement. So if you're going to duo with somebody who is lower ranked than you last season... Uh, your MMR gain per game, per win and stuff is probably going to be lower. So you probably actually don't want to do that. Anyway, that is going to wrap up the uh, stuff you need to know about the end of Season 7, the beginning of Season 8, how placements work and stuff to keep in mind, I guess. The games in preseason will probably be, as I said, pretty toxic. Just take it with a pinch of salt. It doesn't matter if you win or lose. Have some fun. Try out the new changes. Get ready for Season 8. And that is when it's all going to kick into the next level again. For now, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, let me know. If you have any questions, let me know down below as well. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. And I'll leave you with the robots.